So let's talk about the uh, uh, the KD injury. Uh, they're doing an MRI. They think it's an Achilles tear. So this is going to be the blame game. This is the way social media works. It's the pile-on culture. It's just going to be blame everybody today. Uh, so let me start with this. KD wanted to play. Uh, I was told this morning by a source in the Bay Area that KD had tuned out people that told him, don't play. Uh, there's plenty of people in KD's circle within the Warriors and outside of the Warriors that had told KD, dude, you could re-injure this thing. KD heard what he wanted to hear. And we've all done that. You know, folks, it's part of the alpha male of Americans. American workers take fewer vacation days than the rest of the world. Uh, we go to work sick more than the rest of the world. And KD wanted to play. Uh, I also texted a pro athlete last night. And he said to me, a friend of mine said, listen, man, when you are sitting out during a championship game, you feel completely detached. You don't feel like you're part of the team. We're not China dolls here, man. We're men. We're alphas. We got $150 million net worth. We want to play. We want to be part of the group. We want to be guys. And that's part of what makes pro athletes pro athletes. The obstacles they overcome, the guts, the moxie, the metal. KD wanted to play. Secondly, everybody plays hurt. Boogie's hurt. Did you watch Kayvon Looney last night? What if he re-injured his chest? Would you want to sue the Warriors then? What if Boogie's muscle popped out of his skin last night? Clay Thompson popped a hammy. You don't think he could have re-popped a hammy? I mean, everybody in this series is hurt. I mean, Kawhi Leonard, until that two-minute burst, was shot. He was literally a boxer running from punches. He, like, didn't want any part of the game. Uh, the other thing is the Warrior doctors cannot predict an Achilles tear. Okay? And, and then finally, he wasn't limping around. Durant looked great. In fact, my argument, you know, I was watching him early, and I'm like, dude, slow it down. Ease yourself into the game. He had like 12 points in 11 minutes. So Kevin Durant was like chomping at the bait. Get me out there. Give me the ball. Want to score. And listen, when you get injured, I've been injured three or four times in my life. I'm not a pro athlete, but I work out every day. Every single time I've been injured, I come back early. Why? Because I'm a guy, and I'm stupid, and I want to do stuff, and I want to, I want to ski, I want to lift weights, I want to run, I want to go to the beach and play volleyball. I've come back early every time, and you know what happens? I re-aggravate something. I pulled uh, my groin on the right side years ago. I wanted to jog. Doctor said I'd wait another week. I jogged. Left side pulled it. You often tear the opposite side of your body because these are professional athletes. They're not like us. I mean, good God, look at the wear and tear in this series. San Francisco, five-and-a-half-hour flight. Toronto, five-and-a-half-hour flight. San Francisco, five-and-a-half-hour. I do that once. I'd need two naps. These guys are pro athletes. They're burning 7,000 calories a night. They're all hurt. I'm not a doctor, but bodies tend to punish you when you're impatient. And Kevin Durant is an alpha, and he was impatient. And the other thing, let's be totally honest about this. Circumstances dictate action. If this wasn't the finals, he wouldn't be playing. <laughs> it's the finals. In fact, if they were leading three to one, he wouldn't be playing. Kevin Durant would be like, I I'm going to take off. And they wouldn't let him play. I mean, they'd be like, we're not giving you a new uniform. We're leading three to one. This was one of these alpha, everybody's hurt, dynasty in the making, uh, KD's legacy, the team needed him. The doctors are like, well, you're not going to make a calf strain worse than a calf strain. Okay, there was honesty. There was transparency. Everybody knew there was a risk. It stinks. It's lousy, and it happens. By the way, Durant's been hurt before. He's a seven-foot body that was not 100%, came back early with an incredible desire to help his team, and he tore an Achilles. It stinks. It's awful. It's terrible. But... He wasn't limping around when he came back. This was not Willis Reed. He was the best player on the floor for 12 minutes. And it happens, and it's called sports. That's called American sports. Folks, uh, Joy Taylor's brother played in the NFL. If you're in a Super Bowl or a conference championship at halftime, there's a reason they've got needles and ball pills back in that locker room. You play. Gronk. You just wrap stuff up and you play. Now, the good news is most Americans who go to work sick, re-aggravate it and get sicker, don't get a $135 million contract. Uh, and that's where I want to segue to now. Listen, what's next? The chances are he could miss next year. Okay. Remember, Brady missed a year. Stockton missed a year. Michael missed a year. David Robinson missed a year. <laughs> Tony Romo, Cam, Garoppolo, Manning. It's sports. This happens. If I'm KD... I would opt in with Golden State 
either for a year at $31 million, because he can do that, or I'd opt out, and I believe Golden State law from a five-year max, and then Draymond's gone in one year. Listen, many teams, the rest of the market, may have questioned about KD's health. But I learned something years ago. I read a lot about this, that in divorces, the dumper feels guilty. The dump E can benefit. And the Warriors feel guilty this morning. And they're going to pay Kevin Durant a max. If he opts out, they're going to pay him a five-year max. And they will. And I would, if I was Kevin Durant, stay. First of all, he's a good guy. Second of all, he's taken several team-friendly deals with the Warriors. So Iggy gets paid and Livingston gets paid. He's taken team-friendly deals. He's a two-time finals MVP. There's a guilt factor. And he's the best player in the world. Opt out. They'll sign him to a five-year deal. Even if it costs you $700 million, which it will when it's all done for, for uh, oh, going over the salary cap. Good guy. Help create the dynasty. You'll get at least one more title with him. And here's another thing. And this I've seen this my entire life. The last time this country felt like we were all on the same team. Not Democrats, not Republicans, not red, not blue. When was it? Remember, think about this for a second. When's the last time America was on the same team? Didn't last long, but we were. Crisis. George Bush, arm around a fireman. Remember that? Crisis brings people together, folks. Katie feels like a warrior today. He feels like family. He needs help. You don't bail on family members. It's weird about crisis. Crisis brings enemies together, politics together, Americans together, countries together, people together, teams together, stars together, free agents together. This is a crisis. Kevin Durant needs love. He needs help. Do you see Steph and Iggy taking him into the locker room? That's a, You know, Kevin Durant to me always felt like a little bit like a hired gun. He was almost like an independent contractor. We're signing Kevin Durant. He's going to come on, make a bunch of baskets. We're winning, and then he's going to leave. He doesn't feel like that today. He feels like family. Kevin Durant today is family. You don't bail on family. You either you ask him to opt out, let us sign you to a five-year deal. You've been taking pay cuts for years. You need us. For the first time in this relationship, you need us. We needed you. Today, we, Kevin, we need you need us a little bit. You gave us a bunch of deals. You took us to another level. I know in the moment, this seems awful. I get it. But it's, it's weird how crisis works. And it brings people together and teams together and families together. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's people listening. You, you've had estranged members of your family. And you don't, a brother doesn't talk to a sister, doesn't talk to a cousin. And somebody dies, the patriarch. The mom passes away in the family. And for at least a while, it brings everybody together. And Steph and Iggy walking him to the locker room last night, that was an incredible emotional moment. And I don't think Durant, until last night, ever felt like truly a warrior. He felt like a, a hired gun. Come in, do your job, independent contractor. First of all, KD had the best plus minus of any player last night. Second of all, did you see the energy when KD came back, do you see how much energy the Warriors had? Everybody. Steph had an incredible first quarter. Uh, Kevin Durant. And I, and I felt like at the end of the game, they were kind of playing for Kevin Durant. So I know people are going to blame today. They're going to pile on. That's what Twitter does. That's what social media does. But there, there's no real blame here today. I don't believe there is. And secondly, crisis creates a bond. Strangely, unfortunately, sometimes it's the only thing that brings us together. And I think that the Warriors, for the first time, Kevin Durant needs them. And I think he should opt out. Then they'll sign him to a max. I, I just don't understand why he would hobble out to the Knicks. I, I just don't get it. Like, th this is the time more than ever. You re-sign with the family. Last game at Oracle tonight. You, go, you don't get to play it. You play for the next four or five years. Uh, uh, it, you know, and, and it, and it's just so strange how it works. Um, you know, Kevin Durant's different. He's got a little bit of an aloof personality. He's sensitive. He's complex, but he's aloof at the same time. Like he's distant, but uniquely concerned about what you think about him. 
And it's amazing to me how I felt this morning driving in for all the oddities. I mean, he grew up, a, you know, I'm sure he was like six, eight in like the ninth grade. You know, that's a different world to live in when you're Wilt Kareem, you're a seven footer. And he's a little detached sometimes and a little aloof, but he's uniquely uh, concerned about how you think. And, you know, even Bob Meyer said he's just wildly misunderstood. Last night was the first time you like, I got him. I was like, oh, Jesus, that poor kid. Just wanted to matter. Just wanted to be important. Just wanted the city to put his arm around him. Felt a little bit detached and guilty that he wasn't there for his team. He wanted to change the narrative. He put his body on the line and it broke. And it just, it broke. And you just, I just sat there and I'm like, oh, this poor kid. In San Francisco, the ovation he will get just entering the arena for game six is worth watching the finals for how they treat KD when he stands and waves. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.